How's it going everyone? So today we are gonna go over the problem time-based key value store. This problem has been asked a lot by Netflix, but it has also been asked at Oracle, Google, Apple, ByteDance, Uber, Microsoft, Twitter, and Amazon. This problem is definitely a bit confusing to understand at first, but no worries, I'm going to explain it step by step. For this problem, we need to design a time-based key value store that implements two operations. The first one is a set, and in this set function, we're gonna pass in a key, a value, and a timestamp. And then the second operation is a get function, which has two parameters, key and timestamp. The set operation will store a key value and timestamp together. The get function will return the value of the key provided that has a timestamp that is less than or equal to the timestamp given. I realize that might be confusing to understand, so instead of a bunch of words, let's look at an example. Some things to note for our input data are that the key value strings are all lowercase, and the set operations will always be strictly increasing timestamps. So we won't get a timestamp of five and then get a timestamp of one as an example. They will always be strictly increasing. This will be really important later. On the left side of the screen, I'm going to have all of the operations that we are going to perform. And on the right side will be the result of those operations. So first we're gonna set a key of A to a value of B with a timestamp of two. So right now we have a key A mapping to a list of size one containing timestamp two and a value of B. And the timestamp and value are combined together in a tuple. The second operation is a get of key A at timestamp two. Well, right now we do have a value of B at timestamp two, so we would return B. Next, we're gonna call get with key A at a timestamp of three. Because B is tied to a timestamp of two, and two is the closest timestamp we have that is less than or equal to three, then that means we return B. Next, we call get with key A at timestamp one, and because there are no timestamps that are less than or equal to one, we're just gonna return an empty string. Next, we're gonna call set with a key of A, a value of C, and a timestamp of five. So we're gonna add that tuple inside of our list. And as you can now see, five is strictly increasing from two. So our list now is sorted based on the timestamps. Next, we're gonna call get with key A at timestamp seven. If we look in our save times, we can see that five is the closest number that is less than or equal to seven, so we return C. Next, we call get with key A at timestamp four. Two is the closest number less than or equal to four, so we return B. Next, we're gonna call set on key D, value E, and timestamp nine. So now we have another key mapping to a list size of one containing the tuple nine and E. Next, we're gonna call get with key D and timestamp 20. Nine is the closest number that is less than or equal to 20, so we're gonna return E. Finally, let's do one more operation, get with a key of X and a value of 20. But in this case, there is no key so far with a string of X, so we're gonna return an empty string. Okay, now that we have gone through an example, let's talk about the algorithm and data structures we are gonna to use to solve this problem in the most efficient way possible. Remember how I mentioned earlier that our timestamps will always be strictly increasing? Well, a strictly increasing input means that our input is automatically sorted. Whenever you think of sorted input, what is the first thing you should think of? Binary search. Binary search gives us a logarithmic time complexity, which is super efficient. So keep binary search in your mind for later. We are going to come back to that. Now we need to decide what data structures we will use to hold this data. If we look at an example result from our set operations, we can get a pretty good indication of what we should use. Whenever we map a key to a value, you should immediately think of a hash map. So the key of our hash map will be the key we are given in our set operation. Our values will be a growing list of pairs where the pair is the value and timestamp given in the set operation. So we're gonna be using three different data structures technically, a hash map, a list, 
and a pair of some sort. The set operation implementation is super easy now that we have this data structure. Now let's focus our attention completely on the get operation and how binary search is going to help us. Say we have the following data that has been set. All of the data in the array is sorted by the timestamps. Now we are gonna call get with a key of A at timestamp five. This should return C since five is the closest number that is less than or equal to five. With binary search, we can find the closest number less than or equal to a target number in logarithmic time. To start, we need a left pointer starting at index zero and a right pointer starting at index four, the very end. Now we need to compute our midpoint. So here's the most confusing part of the algorithm to compute our midpoint, we need to do left plus right plus one, all divided by two. In a typical binary search, we normally just do left plus right divided by two. So why are we doing an extra plus one? We will come back to that answer shortly, but for now, let's continue on. If we compute left plus right plus one divided by two, our mid will become two. If we look at index two, that would correspond to a timestamp of nine and that is larger than the target timestamp of five, which means our answer must be further to the left. With that in mind, we can shift our right pointer to be mid minus one. So now I'm gonna explain the reason why we need the extra plus one when calculating our mid. Let's assume just for a second that we were to calculate our midpoint the old fashioned way, left plus right divided by two. If we did that, our mid would equal zero the mid timestamp two is less than our target timestamp of five, which means we did find a potential answer. We're going to set our left pointer equal to mid when the mid timestamp is less than or equal to our target. If we set left equal to mid here, our left will stay the same. Now we compute our new mid left plus right divided by two, we would get zero again. Well, we have already calculated a mid of zero, so we would set left equal to mid again. If we just did left plus right divided by two, we can get stuck in an infinite loop. Using the plus one ensures that we will always hit our exit condition. With that out of the way, let's compute our mid the correct way. Left plus right plus one divided by two, that would equal one. The mid timestamp five is less than or equal to our target of five. And since our left and right pointers are equal, we are done with our binary search. So from our get operation, we would return C as our value. Okay, so let's start implementing the code for this solution. The first thing we wanna do is actually create the data structure. So we can come down here and we'll say private map and it's going to be a string as the key. And then the value is going to be a list of pairs. So we can say list of, and we can create a custom class as our pair. So let's just call it data. And then we can call this map. Now, if we come down here, we can say class data, and we're going to have a string as the value and an int as the timestamp. And then let's define our constructor. So we'll say string value in timestamp. And then we just need to assign it. So value equals value and timestamp equals timestamp. And then we can come back up to our time map constructor and initialize the data structure here. So new hash map. And now we can implement our set function. So if our map does not contain the key initially, then we need to set it. So we'll say map.put key, and we're gonna define a new list as the value. And then once we come out of this if statement, we can simply add the timestamp and value to the array. So we can say map.get key dot add and then we're going to create a new data class with the value and timestamp inside of it and that is it for our set function 
And now comes the hard part, which is the get function. So the first thing we want to do is check if the key even exists. So we could say if the map does not contain the key, then we can immediately return an empty string. If we make it past this if check, we know the key exists and we can extract the list. So we can say list of data and call it data equals map dot get key. And now we just need to find the closest timestamp to the timestamp that we've been given. And we can define a helper function to handle this logic. So we can just say return find closest value. And we're going to pass in our data, which is a list, and then the timestamp we are searching for. And now we just need to implement this find closest value function, which is essentially just the binary search that we were talking about. So we can come down here, we'll say private, and we're going to be returning a string find closest value. We're going to pass in our data and our timestamp. And so we are searching for the closest timestamp that is less than or equal to the timestamp we've been given. Now let's define our left and right pointers for our binary search. Our left pointer will start at index zero and our right pointer will start at the very last index of our list, which is data.size minus one. Then we can come down here, we'll say while our left pointer is less than our right pointer, and we need to define our mid, which will be left plus right plus one divided by two. So if our mid index has a timestamp that is less than or equal to the timestamp we are searching for, then we're going to make our left pointer equal to mid. So let's implement that. We'll say if data.getMid.timestamp. If it's less than or equal to the timestamp we're looking for, then L is going to be equal to mid. If this is not true, that means we are too far right and we need to move more to the left. And so to do that, we can say else our right pointer is going to be equal to mid minus one. Once we exit this while loop, we can say data closest data is going to be equal to data dot get L. And there's still one last edge case we need to consider here. Our closest data timestamp still could be greater than the timestamp we've been given. So to handle that, we're going to say return closest closest data dot timestamp. If that is greater than the timestamp that we've been given, then we are going to return an empty string. Otherwise, we're going to return closest data dot value. And there you have it. That is the get function implemented as well. So let's submit to make sure it works. So our time complexity for our set operation is going to be constant. A hash map obviously is constant time complexity for setting data. And then our get time complexity is going to be logarithmic, where n is the number of timestamps in our list for a specific key. As for the space complexity, our set operation will be linear, where n is the number of key value pairs stored. And then our get operation will be constant space complexity. We do not initialize extra memory as we are just doing a binary search. I have other videos on my channel that go over popular binary search problems, so definitely check that out. If you like my style of teaching, definitely drop a like and subscribe. Thank you for the support and I will see you next time.